On the news tonight, President Tinubu transmits 2024 appropriation bill to Senate. Federal government takes steps to break the chain of cholera transmission. Good evening and welcome to NTJW News at 7, your heritage station. Thanks for joining us. My name is Olamumi Adeniji, and here are the details. Senate has passed for second reading the 2024 Appropriation Act Amendment Bill 20, 2024, transmitted by President Tinubu for approval. Senate granted the bill expeditious consideration as it captures funding for the national minimum wage and key infrastructures renewed all projects omitted in the 2024 budget. The amendment is to make provisions of additional funds for recurrent and capital expenditure worth trillions of naira. Meanwhile, Senator Mohammed Mongunu has been appointed the majority whip of the Senate following the removal of Mohammed Ali Ndume. The removal of Ndume was secret to a communication to the Senate from the national leadership of the APC, in which it expressed displeasure over unsubstantiated claims against the federal government by Senator Ndume during a recent interview on a television station. Our boss against the governments before the international community and before the global community it is not only harmful to the government's image alone, but also undermines the party's unity and cohesion. In the meantime, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading of reading a bill seeking to amend the 2024 Appropriation Act to approve 6.2 trillion naira for capital and recurrent expenditure. Speaker of the House, Tajuddin Abbas, read President Tinubu's request seeking authorization of 3 trillion 200 billion naira from the Consolidated Revenue Fund for capital expenditure as well as another 3 trillion naira for recurrent expenditure in 2024. The bill has been referred to House Committee on Appropriation, which provided insights on the executive bill. 1,000 kilometers, and another one from um, Ebonyi all the way to Abuja. And those projects consist of about 21 states. It covers about 21 states. Also, Mr. President submitted this budget to capture the rail projects, such as Kaduna to Kano Rail Lines, which is very critical, very important as well, as well as some um, food and agricultural infrastructure um, 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 projects. So does this pass for the supplementary, or you are still expecting supplementary? No, this is not supplementary, actually. It's called budget adjustments. So existing 2024 budget we are going to consider and amend so that um, those important critical projects can be executed by the president and Nigerians can be happy with it. Okay, apart from the uh, capital expenditure, expenditure, any insight into the recurrent? Yes, actually we have about um, three trillion for um, recurrent, as you can see, because um, we're still discussing with the level and all of that. So when the agreement has been reached, so we have uh, money for that um, uh, minimum wage as well. For development to thrive in human, technological and infrastructural special attention must be given to her national planning. This was the central message at a public hearing on two national budgetary bills by the House Committee on Budget and National Planning. National Assembly correspondent Issa Mohamed Asmo. The dual bills are that for a law to repeal the National Planning Commission Act 2004 and a bill for a law to establish planning processes procedure, monitoring, and evaluation to enhance national budgetary processes. Stakeholders say, for sustainable development, the legislative arm plays crucial roles in enhancing better and coherent budgetary allocations and prioritizing areas of need. The bills are, are timely because uh, one of the issues we are having in the country is also issue of uh, uh, working on the budget, uh, the timing, how it is executed, and so on. If there is any, any, any decision taken now without a person of disability in the roundtable, both public and in-house hearings, 
then I don't think it's a, a going to be a fair play. Sponsor of the bills and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, who represented by the minority leader, Kinsley Chinda, notes that quality legislation is a product of articulated contributions, ideas and inputs from key players. The chairman of the committee, however, expressed concern with the turnout on these important bills to national development. The National Assembly will do its bit, will be very transparent, will follow the due process and this committee will submit its recommendation without any recourse again to any of the ministries, departments and agencies that are concerned. Some of the stakeholders at the event include Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Salu Abdulhamid Dambos, represented by the General Manager NTA Parliament, Federal Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, National Bureau of Statistics, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, among other associations and professional bodies. From the National Assembly, Issa Muhammad, NTA News. The Joint Committee of the National Assembly on the Review of 1999 Constitution is engaging the judiciary on specific issues bordering on improving citizens' access to justice while enhancing public trust. At a sectoral meeting in Lagos, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi, SAN, said, as a follow-up to financial autonomy for local governments, the committee should equally be interested in the conduct of elections at the grassroots by the various states' independent electoral bodies. Michael Olaleye reports. To, as preludes to the review of the 1999 constitution, this sectoral engagement with the judiciary is anchored around the fact that the third arm of government is the last hope of the common man and enhancing its efficiency in the dispensation of justice with strengthening democratic governance. The end of this engagement, the input of the judiciary will be well harvested and a better constitution uh, that will pursue the justice for everyone in Nigeria will be drafted. The Minister of Justice wants the committee to leap above the ritual practice of review to more impactful issues that will force to national prosperity. It called for better insight into electoral matters as they affect the local governments. Aside the notorious fact that the ruling party usually sweeps all the available chairmanships and councillorship seats, there have been unfortunate instances where opposition candidates who manage, and I, will, I say straight, to emerge winners are not sworn in into office. There is also the need to introduce measures to ensure uniformity and security of tenure for local government officials across the country. The committee agreed to come up with inclusive constitution that will truly reflect the values and aspirations of the country. There is a need for us to think out of the box with a view to through constitutional amendment frameworks, bring an amendment by way of creating special seats for women. We will continue in the process, but you know, we have challenges. Um, the greatest challenge that we have faced in the amendment of the Constitution has always been from the State Houses of Assembly. It is believed that the inclusion of Conference of State Assembly Speakers will assist the committee to come up with acceptable and effective resolutions. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. You are still watching the news from NTA Jebel Day. We will be right back after this break. Can I please borrow your wig? No, but I can share my data with you. Mm. Hey, come on, give me some ice cream now. No, mom, but I can share some of my data with you. Can you pass the toilet, please? No, but I can share my data with you. Oh, yeah. Can I use your phone charger? Uh, no, dad, but I can share my data with you. Is it because Glow gives you data bonus? That is why you have been shouting. I can share my data with you. With Glow Data Sharing, you can share your data effortlessly with friends and loved ones today. Dial star 312 hash. Power your relentless ambition with ultra high speed data. Glow Unlimited. Yeah, welcome back and thanks for being there. 
The federal government has instructed the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development to only issue mining licenses if they are tied to local value addition. Vice President Kashim Shetima gave the directive at the opening of the African National Resources and Energy Investment Summit in Abuja. Set House correspondent Abraman Jibrila has more. And for Africa to fully realize its full potential and meet global climate targets, we must put collaboration at the forefront of our collective national transition plans. It is indeed inspiring to see so many international dignitaries who have answered our call to gather here today in Abuja to engage in important discussions. This summit featuring Africa's natural resources accounting officers aims to contribute to the economic growth of the continent through sustainable energy transition and tackling climate change. This government is fully committed to creating an enabling business environment to attract investment that encourages value addition on solid minerals before they are exported. We recognize the losses incurred from exporting crude mineral commodities and understand that it is the time to change this narrative. By doing so, we aim to ensure that our team in youth are actively engaged in economic activities, acquiring skills, and contributing to the nation's foreign exchange earnings. The summit explores how Africa's resources can boost economic prosperity, empower marginalized communities, and break the cycle of debt, thereby funding transition plans and ushering in a greener Africa. We are now saying we must all have one point so that we can harness our value from the minerals. Of course, infrastructure development is very critical and we really thank the government, they've done their best. Unfortunately, minerals never happen in cities. They are found in rural areas, they need roads, they need electricity. So these are some of the enablers that we want to address here and the biggest of them is capacity building. Thank we you, need sir. to achieve capacity to do that. The area of illegal mining in Nusra State has been reduced to a minimum. We are already profiling the artisanal miners, indigenous miners, provide them, empower them with resources and implement. We are doing that in conjunction with the Solid Mineral Development Fund. The two-day summit also avails the opportunity for African leaders to establish a new ecosystem to foster participation in the mining sector, finance the transition and effective utilization of natural resources revenues, and maximize opportunities in the agricultural sector in Africa's sustainable development. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. As the rains intensify, cholera cases are also increasing across the country. And the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDC, is saying other epidemic-prone diseases, such as yellow fever, Lassa fever, and meningitis are now being reported to be on the rise. At a media engagement in Abuja, Director General of the NCDC, Dr. Jide Idris, says rapid response teams have been deployed to states with increasing cholera cases and insists federal government is bent on breaking the chain of the disease transmission. Oh, Lucia Adiabu, complete the report. The cholera epidemiological summary of the NCDC as of 14th July 2024 indicates there are 3,623 suspected cases with 103 fatalities recorded across 34 states and the LCT. To counter the spread of these waterborne disease and others known to be on the rise during rainy seasons, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention NCDC wants governments at the sub-nationals and relevant ministries, especially water resources and sanitation, to keep prioritizing actions that will ensure access to use of safe water. We have deployed national re rapid response teams to the top six states, contributing about 83% of the cases. We see have our eyes on the ball as we continue to strengthen case management efforts to sustain the decline in fatality ratio or to report the global target case fatality rate of less than 1%. That's the target. 
on control measures and response to cholera outbreak and other emerging health issues. The center is disenchanted with underreporting of the situation in some states. Although almost all the states in Nigeria have reported cases of cholera, now there appears to be an underreporting of the situation, as required data from the states are not coming real time as expected. What this means is that some states may not be reporting because they feel the stigma. But if you say ah, you have cholera in the state, they may not like it. But the fact is that if they don't report, they are endangering the lives of their people. Dr. Jide Idris also entreats sanitary and health authorities, including the media, to intensify awareness on personal and environmental hygiene, especially hand washing. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiagbo, and Tenis. Leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, has urged the National Board for Technical Education, MBTE, and the federal government to withdraw the recently released new scheme of service for polytechnics in the country. The union made this position known as the Zone C Mobilization and Sensitization Conference to align with the position of the National Executive Council on the 15 days ultimatum for withdrawal of the new scheme. Joe Popola has more. Nigeria's education sector, particularly the polytechnics, have been experiencing a each free academic calendar, but this may change with the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics and the National Board for Technical Education at loggerhead over the new scheme of service. The Congress of ASUP Zone C, which comprises states in the southwest, according to ASUP president, is to reject what it regards as a document that will further undermine the role of polytechnics in the country's educational system. The union affirmed that industrial harmony will no longer be guaranteed if the new scheme is not abolished. The MBTE upon release of the scheme of service wrote that the scheme of service should be implemented. And this scheme of service, as we have highlighted, is full of irregularities. A 15 days ultimatum has been issued. After the expiration of this ultimatum, the National Executive Council of our union, where that decision was taken, we will reconvey, we will review and take further decision. Also, presidents and other speakers say there are several clauses in the new scheme of service that contradict the Federal Polytechnics Act. The manner in which the dichotomy is, is about to be stretched in the sector and the way and manner in which policy makers look at the sector, especially with regards to funding and other things, is threatening the future of the polytechnic. Major areas of contention include extension of career path for lecturers, limitation of HND orders in the polytechnic, and other gray areas. In Lagos, Joel Ukbola, NC News. And on that note, we end today's news from your radio station. My name is Olamumi Adeniji. Good night.